Good morning, and welcome to Alden Presbyterian Church. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We are happy that you are all joining us today, both in person and our live streaming. It's great to see everybody. So Pastor Pam is unable to be here this morning due to um, required COVID-19 quarantine protocol. So she has not received her COVID test results back. So, therefore, I will be leading service this morning. I was scheduled to be liturgist, but you have me for the entire service. <laughs> Pam is feeling okay, though, with mild symptoms, and we're hoping for a negative test result in her returning next week. Okay, because she will not be here today, our um, program has changed. There will be no sacrament, sacrament of communion today. And also there will be no annual meeting following the service. Both of those will be rescheduled um, at a later date. We do have a special thank you this morning to Adria for your talent of music that we will all be able to enjoy this morning. There are a few announcements. This morning is the last day for any contribution, whether it be non-perishable or monetary, for our Super Bowl of Caring. So today would be the last um, day to, to give anything. I do have a request from the deacons to please consider sending a Valentine's Day card to the members on our Keeping in Touch list, which is in the back of the sanctuary. Um, it's important for them to feel our love and know that they aren't forgotten at this time especially. So the names are on the back. If you want to take a few and, and send out a card this week, that would be wonderful, and they would appreciate that. Um, the Cornerstones are running a little late. Um, they hope they are being worked on and hopefully will be ready for next week. So they, are, they will be uh, worked on this week. Are there any other announcements at this time for the congregation? Let us prepare our hearts for worship. Stand as you are able as we say together the call to worship. Have we not known? Have we not heard? Has it not been told to us since the beginning? 
Those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. You may be seated. We fool ourselves if we think that our ways are hidden from God. Therefore, let us confess our sin, trusting in the mercy of God our Maker, saying together the prayer of confession, followed by a moment of silent personal confession. We cannot hide from you, everlasting God, even if we were to go from one edge of creation to the next. You speak to us of compassion, but the ways in which we treat others show we have not been listening. You explain your hopes to us, and we act as if we don't have a clue as to what is going on. We run as fast and as far from you as we can, and wonder why we have no energy to follow Jesus. Yet you search for us in all the deserted places we flee to so you can take us by the hand to show us the way to life with you. You heal our broken hearts so we can offer them to others. You fill us with your strength so we can bind ourselves to Jesus, our Savior, following him to serve all of your children. Amen. Amen. Have you not been listening? God never tires out, nor is there any expiration date on God's forgiveness. God is ever with us, healing us with mercy and strengthening us for service. If God numbers the stars, surely our names are known by the one who loves us and offers us grace. This is the good news of the gospel. Thanks be to God. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And also with you. Let's have some old-time religion in an old-fashioned way. With some good old gospel singing.
doesn't put a smile on your face. <laughs> As we listen to the word of God, let us say together the prayer for illumination. Shine your truth into our lives, O God, sharpening our awareness of your abundant gifts and attuning us to the signs by which you would lead us. As heirs of your promise, we seek to be guided by your eternal purposes that the church may make your wisdom known. Through Jesus Christ, amen. The Hebrew lesson this morning comes from Isaiah chapter 40, verses 21 through 31. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them like a tent to live in, who brings princes to naught and makes the rulers of the earth as nothing. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown, Scarcely, scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth when he blows upon them and they wither and the tempest carries them off like stubble. To whom will you compare me or who is my equal, says the Holy One. Lift up your eyes on high and see who created these. He who brings out their host and numbers them, calling them all by name because he is great in strength, mighty in power, not one is missing. Who do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God? Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengths the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. 
The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the gospel lesson this morning comes from Mark chapter 1, verses 29 to 39. As soon as they left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with fever, and they told him about her at once. He came and took her by hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sunset, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons. And the whole city was gathered around the door. And he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. Now in the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place. And there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. He answered, Let us go on to the neighboring towns, so that I may proclaim the message there also, for that is what I came out to do. And he went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The sermon that Pastor Pam prepared for today is entitled, Great in Strength, Mighty in Power. This morning texts from Isaiah and from Mark all tell us of God's incredible power and majesty and of his power to heal. The text from Isaiah, written by the prophet while the Israelites were in captivity in Babylon, reminds them that their God the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is above all gods, even or especially the gods of the Babylonians that their captors have tried to force on them. The questioning tone of the text, have you known, have you not heard, is directed to those who have begun to question God's ability to save them. The Israelites have become disillusioned during the long hard years of captivity no longer believing that their God can help them out of their predicament. They need to remi be reminded of God's sovereignty and encouraged to hope once again in the Lord. The message of God for us today in the prophet Isaiah is to take heart. It is a call to remember who God is and how God has helped us throughout our lives. It is a call to come to God so that everything can be put into perspective. The prophet reminds us to wait upon God, to listen to God, and to speak to God so that we might be lifted up, so God can raise us up, restore us to health, and unfold his plan for us. And God's plan is one in which freedom is to be restored, the nations rebuilt, and the cup of suffering be replaced with the cup of eternal joy. Isaiah tells us that God is great, our source of strength above all, yet God's power does not make the strong stronger or give more power to those who already hold the power. No, our God is a God who gives power to the weak and who lifts up the faint and who strengthens the powerless. There is just one thing asked of us that we wait upon the Lord. For if we wait upon the Lord, we are promised that the Lord will renew our strength, that we shall mount up with wings like eagles, we shall run and not be weary, and shall walk and not faint. But you might ask, how do we do that? How do we wait upon the Lord? This waiting upon the Lord is not a waiting of resignation, pessimistically daring God to come and save us. No, this waiting is, that waiting is for those who have given up, who no longer believe in the promises of God's redemption. No, the waiting upon the Lord that Isaiah refers to 
is an expectant waiting, a hopeful waiting, one that believes that God is our source of strength, he gives us power, he gives power to the faint, and strengthens the powerless. It is often hard when we are in the midst of crisis, when all hope seems lost, to believe that God can bring healing and redemption. This is what prayer is for. When we look at the text from Mark, we see that Jesus, Jesus took time to be with God, to pray. Always, always when we read the gospel accounts, we see Jesus drawing aside from the crowds that gather to hear him or to be healed by him, to go and to pray. We find him leaving the disciples for a time and going to a quiet place by himself for a talk with God, for a time of waiting upon the Lord, for a time of developing his relationship, a time for maintaining his relationship with God, a time of strengthening, a time of remembering, and a time of being reattached to the Father. How about us? Do we remember why we're here in the first place? Do we recall the simplicity of what God wants us to do? Do we recall the glory of what God has promised us and how God has helped us in the past? Do we remember where there is fuel for our tanks, food for our journey, supplies for our tasks, recovery for our soul, hope for our hearts, and direction for all of our days? Do we turn aside from the hustle and bustle, from fret and worry, and allow God to inhabit us, to fill us, to restore us, to guide us, so that we can do with all those days what God wants us to do, so that we can be what God wants us to be, and what God has made us to be? Why did Jesus go to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, week in and week out? Why did he worship at the temple with God's people as well as keep the law of God, continually turning aside during his busy days of doing God's work, of preaching, and go to a quiet place to pray? Why did he withdraw from his disciples and from crowds to go up on mountainsides or in garden groves to wait upon the God? Might I suggest to you that he did this because this is what helped him keep on track? He did this because that is what gave him strength? Because without doing it, he could not have done all that he did? God has a purpose for us, and he will redeem us. He will raise us up. And when we hope in that, when we feed ourselves with God's word and allow God to speak to us instead of just talking to him, when we take time aside to be with the Holy One, God moves in us to do what we cannot do on our own. God moves in us to give us strength and the peace that will last. Psalm 91 says, You who dwell in the shelter of our God, who abide in his shadow for life, say to the Lord, My refuge, my rock in whom I trust, and I will raise you up on eagles' wings, bear you on the breath of dawn, make you to shine like the sun, and hold you in the palm of my hand. Praise be to God who raises us up, May his word, his gospel, his promises, his direction be heard by each one of us, that we be loved and clung to day by day. Amen.
Please stand as you are able as we say together the affirmation of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. This morning, I was asked um, that we include in our prayers Keith's brother's employee who is in early stages of battling cancer. So let us pray for successful treatment and outcome and just strength around him. Are there any other joys or concerns to be brought to our attention this morning? Michelle. Thank you all for your prayers for my eye surgery um, on Friday. I'm going to get choked up. <laughs> the surgery went really well. Um, she's a little sore, but she's seeing way better than she was before. She had her appointment, her follow-up, and she has 20-20 vision. So she's pretty excited about that, and she's excited to read every little thing possible. So, um, But I'm sure she would like to say thank you for your prayers and thoughts and um, prayers for speedy recovery. Is that good? Okay, you're welcome. Then let us go to God in prayer. God, our refuge and strength, these are truly trying times for all of us. But through it all, we take hope in Christ and your promise to never leave us. We pray for the church, for all Christians everywhere. Our gracious God, may your spirit give strength to all your people as they work in your world. Unite us in your truth and love, and help us to show your love to others. We pray for places where there is war or famine. We pray for our community, for all who live and work here. We pray for our nation's leaders, and we pray for those in need, for sick, for those needing your strength and healing. This morning, we especially pray for Sylvia, Lenny, Ken, Keenan, Doug, Roger, Gail, Lori, Tammy, and Michelle. We pray for our homebound and our long-term care friends, Laura, Bob, and Ruth. We pray that you wrap your arms around Keith's brother's employee as he starts an uncertain time in his health. Let us pray that the doctors make a successful diagnosis and treat him so that he can really come out and rid this cancer that has entered his body. We share and we thank your help around the doctors that had a successful eye surgery for Michelle and asked for continued help and strength that wraps around her in these next days of continued healing. God of compassion and comfort, heal all those who suffer in mind, body, and spirit, and bless those who care for those people. And let us pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As we have given our gifts and offerings, let us say together the prayer of dedication of those gifts. You lift us to our feet so we can walk with you, loving God, and you fill us with your gifts so we may pour them out of those around us. Take what we offer and use them in that kingdom work which strengthens the weary, feeds the hungry, and gives hope to the despairing. Amen. So last night, when I got the call from Pastor Pam that she was, an, she was unable to do the service this morning, and she asked me to fill in, I was actually in West Falls, just sitting down to dinner with four couples. Uh, my dearest friends who hadn't gone out in quite a long time, but felt safe enough to get together to catch up. So I excused myself from the table to take the call when I saw it was her. And when I came back, I explained to them what I had been asked to do. I said, you got this, you're fine, you'll be fine, don't worry about it. But then we started talking about it. Discussion started. And we were talking about things and messages, what they would tell a congregation if they were in my spot. So here's some food for thought. Live life. Take advantage of the time with loved ones because you don't know when things may change. Hug those you love. Life is short and these days are uncertain. So take the special moments that you can. If given the opportunity to do something and you feel safe, do it. Always be kind. And this is from me, because this is my favorite. It's the simple things in life that bring the greatest joy. As we depart to serve God, let us say together the charge and blessing. Go out to serve. Someone needs you today. What you have to give will be helpful to someone. We pray God will open our eyes. Go in the name of Jesus Christ, who sends us. Speak a healing word, do a caring deed. We will go with God's help to bind up the wounds of the broken heart. God strengthens the powerless and helps the weak. We shall run and not be weary. We will serve the strength God supplies. Thank you.
Thank you.